Duck Church. Uh, my name is Lynn Usher, and uh, this morning the first order of business for me is Cole has asked me to make a special request for um, a service opportunity here. And you may not have picked up, but my name is Usher. And so <laughs> when I wear my name tag that says Lynn Usher, I get all kinds of people coming up to me expecting me to provide the services that ushers provide. So this is a bank blank slate, and I'm, on Cole's behalf, asking that you put your name into these slots for the next eight Sundays or so, uh, so that you can serve as an usher at the 930 service. So I will pass that around. I'm here today uh, lending a hand while our pastor, John Tyson, is away in vacation. So this is a special day. First, you can tell it's special because I'm wearing actual shoes rather than flip-flops. <laughs> so it is a notable occasion. But what it's really notable for is that today we have uh, one of John's predecessors who will be in the pulpit. Uh, David Clift, as you'll see in the insert in the bulletin, uh, served as pastor of Duck Church from 1994 to 2007. David guided the congregation through a period of substantial growth, including the construction of this building. Um, and from my perspective, as the current chair of the Finance Committee, uh, Perhaps one of the most notable aspects of that was that that project was fully subscribed at the time that it was built. So it essentially went into construction fully paid for, and we are in the enviable position of not having debt uh, over our heads. And uh, so that was a very significant accomplishment. We're grateful for David's leadership at that time and look forward to hearing his sermon today. Do we have any visitors this morning? Great. 
We welcome your being here. And one thing that we like to do religiously is to have folks, both visitors as well as those who are here every week or nearly every week, to register your attendance in the blue notebooks that you'll find at the end of each pew. So if you'll do that, I'll appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> the bulletin lists several upcoming activities and opportunities for ministry, but I want to draw your attention to three particular uh, events. First, in the coming week, the North Carolina Annual Conference will be meeting in Greenville. On the heels of the recent general conference, uh, the uh, delegates will be dealing with a variety of resolutions and other matters uh, growing out of the general conference. And so I encourage you to pray for the delegates to the annual conference during this period. Second, in association with our uh, pastoral transition, which will occur this month, the district superintendent has called a special session of the charge conference for Thursday, June 20th at 7 p.m. That date and time are noted in the uh, bulletin. And finally, our new pastor, Chris Adlett, will preach his first sermon on June 30th. I want to uh, let you know, however, that the schedule of services will be different that day so that we'll have only one traditional service which will be held at 8 a.m. Uh, following that worship service, uh, we'll have a catered brunch at which we'll be able to uh, talk and, and uh, get to know uh, uh, Chris and his wife, Angie. As we share prayer concerns, I want to provide an update on Debbie Bright our Director of Christian Education and Financial Secretary. As many of you know, uh, Debbie had a fall on the stairs uh, going up to her office a couple months ago, uh, and the surgeons and uh, her doctors uh, reached the conclusion that she would require surgery, which she had on Friday. The surgery went well. Uh, Debbie is in some pain, but uh, they are very optimistic about her uh, recovering um, from the, the surgery and uh, the physical therapy that she is, uh, will begin on uh, tomorrow. Um, but f the recuperation will require at least two weeks, and so during the next two weeks, if you have a need for staff or a pastoral care need, uh, if you would, please uh, simply call Debbie Lucas, the, uh, our administrative assistant, and make her aware of that. Um, now, let's uh, take a few moments to hear the prayer concerns that, that you have, and we'll begin on this side of the sanctuary. Yes. this side. Okay. Thank you very much. Any others over here? Yes. Thank you. Any in the choir? Any other prayer requests? Please bow your head. Lord, you've heard our concerns. You know what is on our heart. Please guide us in caring for our neighbors and showing your love to all who are facing challenges. In Christ's holy and blessed name, amen. You'll note in today's bulletin that this is uh, the day that we commemorate uh, Pentecost, the day on which the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples and followers of Jesus. As such, it marks the beginning of the Christian church and the emergence of the Trinity. That is what we understand to be God in three persons, a cornerstone of Christianity. 
In the centuries following the earthly life of Jesus, this concept was discussed and debated by theologians and ultimately celebrated in statements of faith such as the Nicene Creed that we'll recite later in the service. In remembrance of Pentecost, please remain standing following the next hymn and join me in responsive reading number 80, the Canticle of the Holy Trinity. Now, please turn to hymn number 88, Maker in Whom We Live. in the responsive reading on page 80 of the hymnal. heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. And the, noble of Christ praise you. the white robed army of martyrs praise you. eternal Son of the Father, when you became incarnate to set us free, you humbly accepted the virgin's womb. You overcame the sin of death, and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You
You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. People, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. seated. Now we join in the prayer of confession that's printed in the bulletin. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine extraordinary servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. Thou, for thine inestimable love and redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of grace, for the hope of glory, and we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be infinitely thankful. Please continue in silent confession. Lord, we know that you hear us when we ask your forgiveness and we are thankful for your grace. Hear us again when we pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We'll now have a brief video about uh, Mission Moment. And today's uh, video deals with Kite Day, which has been sponsored over many years now by uh, our United Methodist Women. If you want to decorate, it's probably here, but if you want to decorate both sides, that's fine.
told the folks at 8 o'clock that uh, you've heard the statement there are no coincidences. Uh, I didn't know until this morning that that video was going to be presented. Uh, I think some of you know that our younger daughter, Ellen, uh, is a participant in the Kite Day uh, because she attends the uh, adult day program in Manio and the United Methodist Women invite the participants in the Manio program, which is called the Beach Club, and the Currituck uh, program, which is called the Lighthouse Club. And uh, this, uh, the significance of this is easy to ignore. Um, they have, the Methodist Women have done this over the years uh, beginning when our regional mental health agency and many of the local uh, programs such as or similar to these um, essentially operated in the dark. They operated like warehouses in which pr these folks were kept removed from the community with few opportunities for interaction. And so by reaching out in that way the United Methodist Women encouraged those agencies and organizations to open uh, their uh, arms uh, to the community. Uh, and it's very uh, significant that that was done because it is a world of difference now than it was when Janan and I moved here on a year-round basis in 2004. The other thing aspect of this that is very personal to us is that to us it represented an attitude and an approach to the practice of Christianity at Duck Church that was at one time reflected in uh, the slogan, open hearts, open minds, open doors. Um, and so one of our challenges when we moved here on a year-round basis um, was to determine where the gifts were within the duck congregation that would enable us to participate as full members of this uh, church. Um, we found people like Judy Childs, like uh, Laura Daniels, Renee White, and Lynn Shields and several people who, some of whom had uh, backgrounds in special education, uh, most of all of whom had a special gift for working with folks with intellectual and developmental disabilities. It's because of those people right now, Janan can sit here uh, in the second row of, of this worship service. I can stand up here because we have the support of our fellow members in accommodating our daughter in the Sunday school. And that is very significant and I think entirely consistent with the Methodist notion of open hearts, open minds and open doors and we are very grateful for that. So uh, please excuse the, the personal uh, privilege that I, I've taken in, in saying that but uh, it's, it seemed to me that this was an important opportunity to make that statement uh, to you. Um, at this point we will invite the ushers to come forward and we will um, receive the tithes and offerings.
providing resources that we can use in support of this church, church's ministry, and in support of our neighbors in this community and beyond. We are so grateful for all of these blessings and ask your guidance to use them in doing your work in this place. Amen. Our next hymn is number 393. turn your attention to the bulletin. And join me in reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen.
be seated. It's good to be back home again. Uh, I've been helping out up at uh, Pillmore United Methodist Church. A good friend of mine, Jerry Cribb, retired like me, is serving that church, and he was going to have to be gone several times, so I said, I'll be willing to come up here and help. And uh, most of you know, I don't mind running my mouth, uh, so I got to preach four times. Uh, coming, starting next Sunday, uh, the district superintendent, uh, there's a church in Mo Yacht, I got to get that right, uh, that has gone to part-time, and he's asked me to go up there and uh, serve with those people for a little while. So I'll be gone again for a little while, but this will always be home, and you'll always be right here, no matter where I go, no matter what happens. Last night, about 1 o'clock in the morning, I told the early crowd, I woke up. I couldn't go back to sleep. I don't know whether it was anxiety, excitement, or gas. <laughs> but I never did go back to sleep. So, if I fall asleep during the sermon, <laughs> Suzette is going to come up here and prod me. If you fall asleep during the sermon, please try not to snore. Uh, I didn't bring my robe. I asked your grace. Uh, I'm too old to drag that thing around. Uh, your response should be, well, you don't look old. <laughs> I appreciate that you allow me not to bring my robe A slow crowd. One more time. I appreciate you letting me not bring my robe. That was pretty good, except I believe I heard Tom say, he really does look old. So, um, I am a little sleepy. I went over between the services and noticed that the choir serves coffee. So I asked them, do you serve coffee every Sunday? And they said, No. Uh, we heard you were coming, and we wanted to make sure that people were awake when they leave after the sermon. So, but it's good to be back with you. A friend of mine, little girl, went home from school at lunchtime with her tummy hurting. And her mother said, it's nothing serious, honey. It's just empty. If you put something in it, everything will be all right. A couple of days later, I visited my friends, and I happened to mention that I had a headache. The little girl said, my mommy said it's because it's empty. <laughs> and if you put something in it, it'll be all right. <laughs> well, for the last several days, I have been trying to put something in my head. And now I'm going to try to do the same for you. As you have heard, today is Pentecost Sunday, the birthday of the coming of the Holy Spirit into our world in a new and special way. I want us to look at three special gifts that the Holy Spirit brings to us. Now, if I lose you in the sermon. If you want to know what I'm talking about, I picked out the opening hymn because that hymn has everything in it that I'm going to mention today. But first, the story. A little girl was visiting her grandmother. They were out looking at the grandmother's flowers. The little girl decided she was going to open up a beautiful rose. When she did, it all fell apart. She was all upset, and she said, Grandma, I don't understand. When God opens a flower, it's beautiful. When I open it, it all falls apart. The grandmother said, Well, honey, there is a good reason for that. God is able to do it because he works from the inside out. God works from the inside out. That is the message of Pentecost. 
and the coming of the Holy Spirit. That is what the disciples began to experience. That is what every Christian experiences. That is what Pentecost is all about. God working from the inside out. So I want us to look at three symbols of the Holy Spirit and see the blessings that those symbols bring to us. First, there is breath. Breath or wind is a symbol of life, of vitality. Remember when God created mankind? They were lifeless until God breathed in them the breath of life. The same is true with the spiritual life. We are not spiritually alive until God breathes life into us. Here's how it happened at Pentecost. Suddenly the sound like a mighty blowing violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole home where they were sitting. The breath of God, the wind of God blew into the disciples and they became spiritually alive. They became enthusiastic. They became energized. They now had meaning and purpose in their life and everything was changed. Have you ever listened to a coach after a losing game? Have you ever heard things like this? We deserve to lose. We were absolutely lifeless out there. We had no drive, no energy. We were like zombies just going through the motions. We had no spirit. Have you ever seen someone living life that way? Have you ever seen someone living life with no zest, no commitment, no vitality, no drive, no energy? Have you ever seen someone living life like a robot, just walking through life, going through the motions with no feeling of really being alive? Have you ever had those days? I have. How are you feeling this morning? Do you feel truly alive? Has God's spirit breathed spiritual life, spiritual energy into your life? We cannot live life at the optimum level if the spirit doesn't breathe life into us. Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean we won't have our bad days, our yuck days, our days of struggle. We all have them. What it means is that we will not stay in those days. It means the breath of God will continue to pour spiritual life into us and enable us to walk through those days. Back in 1878, Edwin Hatch recognized the need for the life-giving breath of God. And so he wrote this prayer. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew. The first symbol of the Holy Spirit is breath. The symbol for life, for vitality, for zest. The kind of life created by the presence of God working from the inside out. Do we have that energizing breath? in our lives, in the church. My prayer for you and for me is that we will have a fresh blowing of God's breath into our lives. My prayer for Duck Church, as you prepare for a new conference year and a new pastor, is that the mighty wind of God's spirit, God's energy, God's vitality will blow into this place in new and wonderful ways. Second point, there is fire. Fire is a symbol for power. We put two words together, fire, power. In the Bible, fire is one of the symbols of the presence of God. Look at Exodus in the burning bush. This is what we see at Pentecost. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them, the power of God. There was a man who went to the doctor. He was greeted 
by a nurse. He said, ma'am, I have a headache. She said, take this hospital gown, go into that examining room, and the doctor will be in there shortly. He said, ma'am, I just have a headache. She said, you heard me. Go in that examining room, put the gown on, and the doctor will be there shortly. So he obediently did what she said. When he got into the room, there was another man sitting there with a hospital gown. And he said, I don't know why I'm here. I just have a headache. The other man said, you think you got it bad? I just came here to fix the thermostat. Now, that woman had power. <laughs> but that's not the kind of power about which I am talking. I'm not talking about the power of brute force, the power of political clout, the power of financial influence, the power of a heavy squat. Some of you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the power that comes from the presence of God in our lives that produces amazing things. The power of God, the firepower of God produces things like character, commitment, confidence, purpose, and meaning. There is nothing stronger than that kind of power. There is firepower. The firepower of the Holy Spirit is what fuels, mobilizes, and enables us to do great things things. The firepower of the Holy Spirit teaches us that God is with us and God is going to win. The firepower of the Holy Spirit te assures us that nothing can separate us from God, not even death. Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean we won't have our weak days, our struggling days, our wobbly days knees, days, we all have them. What it means is that we won't stay in those days. The firepower of God will help us go through those days into days of confidence and strength. The second symbol for the Holy Spirit is fire. The symbol of strength, power, the kind created by God in us from the inside out. Do you have that firepower in your life? My prayer for you and for me is that we will have a fresh outpouring of the fire of God in our lives. My prayer for Duck Church as you prepare for a new conference year and a new pastor is that the fire of God will burn brighter than ever before and you will have a new energy and a new power in this place and in your lives. Even with the breath of God and the fire power of God, life can be rough. God understands. So the Holy Spirit gives us a third blessing. Matthew tells us, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. We all know that one of the symbols behind the dove is peace. The peace that comes from the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Notice that the dove is descending. That's important. Because the kind of peace I'm talking about comes from above. Inner peace, the serenity, courage, and confidence that meet life in its trouble with a steady eye and a confident step comes only from the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Paul describes it with these words. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. There is a peace that comes from God that transcends our human understanding, transcends our human resources, our human power. I am reminded of that truth over and over. I am reminded when I see someone confronting the nightmare of tragedy with the peace that transcends all understanding. I am reminded when I see someone facing bad news with a peace that transcends all understanding. 
I am reminded when I see someone facing the loss of a loved one with a peace that transcends all understanding. I am reminded when I see someone encountering the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune with a peace that transcends all understanding. I am reminded when I see a person struggling with life's questions and confusion with a peace that transcends all understanding. I am reminded when I see someone who is dying and they face that with a peace that transcends all understanding. Friends, in all of those experiences and so many more, I am reminded that there is an inward peace, a serenity peace, that can come only from God and his presence through the Holy Spirit. Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean we won't have our stormy days, our stressful days, our turbulent days. We all have them. What it means is that the sending dove of God's peace will help us journey through those days. The third symbol for the Holy Spirit is the dove. Peace and confidence. The kind of life God creates in us from the inside out. Do you have the peace that transcends all understanding? Let's pray for an even greater portion of the peace of God in our lives and in the church. My prayer for Duck Church, as you prepare for a new conference year and a new pastor, is that the dove of the Holy Spirit will descend on this place and in your lives and the peace of God will give you great confidence as you live your lives and begin this new chapter in the story of Duck Church. Teacher asked her fourth grade class to name the person they consider the greatest person in the living in the world today. Their responses were varied. One little boy said, I think it's Tom Brady because of all the Super Bowls he won. The little girl said, it's Bill Gates because he invented the Internet. One student said, Oprah. A lot of different responses. Then one little boy said, teacher, I think it is Jesus. Teacher smiled and said, I like your answer, but remember, I asked who is the greatest person alive in the world today? And Jesus died a long time ago. He's not here. Without hesitation, the little boy said, Oh no, teacher, that's not right. Jesus is alive. He lives in me right now. Friends, that is the good news of Easter Tide. the season in the church year that we just finished. That is the continued good news of Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ is right here, right now, through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Friends, what I'm talking about is so important because living in this world is not always easy. Sometimes we feel like we are in a big hole and can't get out. Man took a shortcut through the cemetery at night, dark, couldn't see, fell into an open grave, jumped, clawed, tried to get out, couldn't, screamed and yelled, hoping somebody would hear him and come, nobody came. So he sat down in the corner of the grave and waited till morning. A few hours later, another man came walking through the cemetery, fell into the same hole. He jumped, he clawed, he screamed, he yelled just like the other man. Then all of a sudden, from the corner of the grave, he heard, you can't get out of here. <laughs> but he did. <laughs> that man was inspired. To do what he couldn't do. <laughs> Friends, I'm a realist. Sometimes life can feel like we're trapped in a giant hole and can't get out. In those moments, we need some inspiration. 
Sometimes we need a little help with our energy, our get up and go attitude. We need the breath of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we need help with our strength, our power, our don't give up attitude. We need the fire of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we need help with our worry, our anxiety, our it will be all right attitude. We need the peace of the Holy Spirit. My prayer for you and me is that the breath of God will blow in us and through us so we will truly become energized for the living of our day. My prayer for you and for me is that the fire of God will blow in us and through us so we will be empowered for the living of these days. My prayer for you and for me is the peace of God will blow in us and through us so we will have confidence for the living of these days. My prayer for you, for Duck Church, and for Moyot church is that we will experience Pentecost our closing hymn is number 420 it will not be a surprise benediction on behalf of Libby and me I would like to thank you for all those years that you breathed empowered and gave me confidence you made a difference in my life and wherever I went when I left here I was better because of knowing you serving with you, working with you. You are special. Don't ever forget it. And you now breathe into each other what you breathed into me, and you will make a difference. Now, go knowing that you won't go into that task by yourself. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit will be with you every step of the way. He promised. He keeps his promises. And the church said, 